Are you dreaming of visiting Switzerland? Planning a trip to Switzerland is very exciting, but it can also be overwhelming. How do you choose which of the many scenic cities, towns and villages to visit? Which mountaintop excursions should you take? And what's the best way to get around Switzerland? And of course, how much of the country can you realistically see within your time frame? If you've asked yourself any of these questions, this is the podcast for you. This is the Holidays to Switzerland travel podcast, and in each episode, your host Carolyn Schonefinger chats with Swiss travel experts to answer your most commonly asked questions, provide practical tips, and take you on a virtual visit to the most popular destinations, and of course, some hidden gems to help you plan your dream trip to Switzerland. And you'll hear plenty of conversations about Swiss cheese and chocolate too. Are you ready to plan your trip to Switzerland? Well, let's get started. Welcome to episode 62. Today we're chatting about the Jungfrau region, one of Switzerland's most popular tourist destinations and one that many visitors flock to to go hiking, enjoy the stunning scenery or do an excursion to one of the many mountains in the Bernese Alps. Jungfrau Jok and Schilthorn are two of the most famous excursions that draw visitors here. And we've discussed the Jungfrau region in numerous previous episodes of the podcast. But today I wanted to focus on child-friendly activities. I know from when my husband and I used to travel with our kids when they were young, the key to a trip that kept everyone happy was including some days or even half days where the kids could burn off some energy and do things that they enjoyed. This might have been kicking a ball around in a park, visiting a playground or having a game of mini golf. Thankfully, in the Jungfrau region, there are lots of child-friendly activities and many of them are great fun for adults too. To tell us about some of the fantastic activities that the whole family can enjoy, I'm joined today by Isabel Rapisada from Jungfrau Region Tourism. Whether you are travelling with children or are just young at heart, you won't want to miss what Isabel is going to share with us. But before we hear from her, I'd like to say thank you to the team from Switzerland Tourism, sponsors of the podcast. You'll find plenty of ideas to help plan your family's tour around Switzerland on their website, myswitzerland.com. So do go and take a look, because if you need to go on a tour, you need Switzerland. Now, without further ado, let's welcome Isabel to the podcast. Hello, Isabel. Thank you very much for coming on to the podcast. It's lovely to have you here. Thank you, Caroline. Hello. Yes, it's very lovely to talk to you about Switzerland and one particular region, the Jungfrau region. Exactly. Now, many um, of our listeners will be familiar with the Jungfrau region, and today we're going to talk specifically about things to do with children there. But before we get started, could you tell us a little bit about yourself and your role with Jungfrau Region Tourism? Yes, exactly. So I work in the sales and marketing department as a market manager. So I'm doing the international sales, mainly markets far, far away from Switzerland. And one of them is actually also Australia and New Zealand. So I'm selling the region um, or promoting it to all of different markets around the world. And yeah, I love my job because it's, it's so diverse. It's like the region itself. It tasks that I have that I can promote different areas of the region, different activities in the region for all kinds of guests. That makes it so special, I would say, to, to work for Young for Region Tourism. And the region itself, you know, you know it yourself, you've been yourself. It's so diverse. You can do so much in such little time. Yeah, that's that what makes it really, really special, I would say, to work for, for the destination itself. Yeah, absolutely. And it certainly wouldn't be a difficult destination to promote because it's just so beautiful. And as you said, that it's so diverse. There's there's something for everyone. As I mentioned, many people will have already heard of the Jungfrau region, and it's quite famous for a couple of um, mountain excursions, in particular the, the Jungfrau Jok and, and the Schilthorn excursion. And they're great for kids too. But for families that are coming to the Jungfrau region and, and would like you know, some other activities that, that will suit the kids. What are some of the things that, um, that they can do? 
And as you mentioned already, one of our top mountain excursions are easily doable with, you know, as a family with kids as well. But of course, you want to do other things too than just going up the mountains. You want to be active maybe a little bit with the kids. Yeah, there's so much to do in all of the different um, areas. So maybe for those that don't know the Young Fur region so well already, we've got five different mountain villages uh, in the region where you can visit them or you can stay in the in the villages itself. And from there, you are easily in on different mountaintops. Um, also, when it comes to distances, you know, it's not far away. You know, Switzerland itself is super small. You get around very easily by train or by car if you want. And this is the same in the Young Fur region. So if you are based in one village, you can still visit the other village on, in the other valley, basically. Um, so this is good to know as a family as well. Um, either if you are there with a car or with public transportation, it's easy to get around. We've got these five mountain villages. We've got uh, Grindelwald, uh, Wengen, Müren, which are the two car-free villages we have actually on top of the mountain. And we've got the Lautebrunnen and the Haslital. So these are the five destinations. And in all of these destinations, I would say there's certainly a family activity you, you don't or you can't miss. So you need to need to do. And um, what is also very nice to know um, as a family is that there's a lot of different playgrounds on top of the mountain. So if you're coming down, for example, from the from the top of the mountain station, there's certainly a playground where the kids can, you know, be active um, and enjoy the views. There's one specific playground um, that we know that is accessible from uh, Grindelwald, one of our biggest mountain village. Um, this is uh, located on Mount Menlichen, and Mount Menlichen is accessible in summer or in winter. So you can go skiing, sledging there in winter. Of course, you can go hiking uh, up in summer. And on the top, there's a playground with a huge cow, a wooden cow. And this is actually um, eight, I think, eight and a half meters high. So pretty high. And for the kids, it's just amazing because they can climb up the cow. They can uh, slide it down again. There's a viewing platform on top of the cow. And the best thing um, as a family is also that uh, as the parent itself, you know, you can have a snack in the restaurant just next to next to that cow or that playground. And the kids can play on the playground and you have always, you have them, you know, in your sight. And that's, I guess, always important for the parents. And that's the case basically, yeah, in every or in, more, in all of the villages that you can visit. I went to Manlikan for the first time uh, this summer when I was in, in Switzerland and I'd heard a lot about it before and, and I know people with families who'd, who'd been there and, and raved about the playground and, it, yeah, it was just amazing. The, the kids there were just having an absolute ball. We sat out, we weren't with children, but we sat out there and had a drink and a snack and, and watched them playing and in the background, the, the beautiful views, it was there. Yeah. Oh, it's a wonderful setting. Definitely is. And there's another one too, isn't there, at um, Almondhubel um, above Murren? Exactly. So Murren is one of our two car-free villages and it's actually from Grindelwald, another valley. So you've got the Grindelwald Valley and you've got the Lauterbrunnen Valley. And from the Lauterbrunnen Valley, there's two ways to go up to Murren. And uh, actually, this is also all if you have, um, you know, a Swiss travel pass, this is kind of like the, the way to travel around in Switzerland. But it's always good to know for families as well, if they hold one, they can travel for free to Mirren because Mirren, this is where people live as well. So it's all in the public transportation network of Switzerland and included in the Swiss travel pass. So um, sometimes, you know, for families, it might sound a bit difficult to get up to a car-free village because, yeah, it, it might take long or it's difficult to get up there, but it's actually super easy. And yes, in Murren, there is um, the house mountain, so to say. It's called the Almond Hubel. And you can hike up there in summer if you want, but you can also take um, a funicular. That's like a ride that, take, that takes you a few minutes. And once you get up there, there is as well a restaurant uh, with specialities like pastries or uh, local meat, local cheese you could try out there. And just next to the restaurant, there's another um, beautiful playground. It's called actually the Flower Park because you can learn more about the alpine herbs, alpine flowers that grow there in summer. And the kids can learn more about them in a very interactive way. Yes, there's like wooden stages that look like a flower, playground like trampolines or a swing or anything that brings you closer to how the life on, an, on a farm or on an alp is basically. 
and there was lots of water activities uh, that I saw when I was there. The, kid, the kids were loving that because it was a warm day. Now, something else that um, that I've seen a lot of in Switzerland that I'm not really that familiar with, um, I mean, they're, they're not common in Australia, and that is called the marble runs. Can you tell us a little bit about those? Yes, definitely. That's a really cute, fun little activity to do as a family, definitely. And a marble, marble uh, run is basically a colourful little wooden ball that you roll down a run, basically. And that run is made out of wooden pieces. And it's usually um, done by local craft companies that do that uh, up on the mountains. And that little run that goes along a hiking trail, basically. So that hiking trail, if you would hike it, it would take you maybe one hour or one an hour and 30 minutes. So it's really an easy hiking trail. And um, yeah, so you can walk along this run and then you can, on every step, or every stage along that hiking trail, you can roll down these little balls. And especially for the kids, it's funny to see where the balls go, uh, roll through because it goes through tunnels, it goes through funnels or bridges or uh, water courses between uh, the trees. So it's really a fun activity to do, especially for smaller kids. And within our region, I mean, there's different places you can do it in all of Switzerland, but in the Jungfer region, you can do it on the Hasliberg, which is in the Haslital, one of our um, areas in the region. And uh, yeah, this is definitely something you can do in summer or you should do in summer. Yeah, great. We'll, we'll talk more about the, the Haslital um, in, in a moment because I know there's plenty of things there for children to do. I can remember when we visited uh, Switzerland when our children were small, they used to love going on the, the rural barns or the, the summer toboggan runs, and I'm sure they'd still enjoy it today. But can you tell us a bit about those for, for the listeners who aren't familiar with, with what a rural barn is and, and whereabouts can we find them in the Jungfrau region? Yeah, definitely. I'm happy to do so. So, um, yeah, as you said, a summer tobogganing run, as the name it already says, it's kind of like tobogganing or sledging in summer, not in winter. And you are basically on a fixed run. You know, you are on your little sledge, I would call it, a sledge on a wheel, maybe. And then you wheel down this run. And it is all fixed. So you, you are, you cannot steer yourself. Basically, the run steers you. And it's a lot of fun because you can do it alone. You can be on a kind of like tobogganing run alone or together with a friend or your, your mom or dad as a kid. And uh, it goes like up to, I think, 40, 40 kilometers per hour. So it's pretty fast too. But of course, there are breaks and you can go slow as well if you want. Um, but it's definitely a fun activity to do in summer. In the Jungfer region, we have a mountain that is called the Pfingst Eck. The Pfingst Eck is located in Grindelwald or close to Grindelwald. So you can get there by car. There's a car park. Um, you can get there by bus as well if you are traveling around by public transportation. And from Valley Station, basically, you take up a cableway to the top of the, the mountain on Pfingst Eck. That's like a private all close to Grindelwald. And from there, uh, the rodal barn basically starts right there at the station. And then you rodal down and you come up again with the cable, with the cable way. And as well on Things Egg, this is really also a family destination in Grindelwald, I would say. Um, there is also another activity I want, I want to mention. It's the fly line. Uh, it's kind of like uh, some sort of zip lining, um, but a rather calmer way of zip lining, I would say. It's really an activity where you float through the forest, basically like a bird. So you pass trees, you pass water courses over bridges, um, around rock faces. And it's really something that um, is easy to do as an adult and as a kid. It's not something that you need to be very brave for. It's really, it's safe. And you can do it if you are, you know, if you don't want to do like, harder adventures activity it's really soft adventure so uh perfect for families actually that's great to know because as you mentioned that's uh Fingsteg is just what's well, clo close to Grindelwald or on the edge of Grindelwald I guess whereas many people would be more familiar with Mount Fersht which is sort of Grindelwald's famous adventure spot so it's good to know that there's an alternative but what can they do at Fersht 
Yes, first, as you said, they call it the top of adventure in our region uh, because it's really where you can do lots of different soft adventure activities as well. Um, so that is kind of like you go up by cableway to the top of the mountain. And from there, uh, you can basically do different stages down to Grindelwald again. And on these different stages, you can do different activities. So um, you basically don't go down by cableway again. So you go down by different uh, means of transport, I would say. But before I tell you more about that, also on the top of the mountain, there is a first cliff walk you can do um, that I would always recommend to do when you're go going up there. Uh, it's a walk where you walk along the cliff, basically, and at the end of the walk, there is a platform where you actually also have a glass floor. So it's something that, yeah, is a bit thrilling, but uh, it's it's beautiful views. You get rewarded with a beautiful panorama up there. And also, if you don't want to do that, no problem at all. I mean, you don't have to. This is just a great uh, add-on if you're up there. There's also a restaurant where you can get lunch, you can get snacks uh, in between um, in the afternoon or in the morning. And if you want to do the activities, you start um, on the top. And then there's the first flyer and the first glider, they are called. Um, the first flyer is basically zip lining, just um, very easygoing zip lining. And then the first glider is kind of like where you get attached to an eagle. They build a kind of like eagle looking statue as well. And then they um, attach you to the an eagle and they pull you backwards first um, a few meters I think it's around 80 or 100 or a bit more than 100 meters backwards and then they let you go down again with uh, great speed and that's a lot of fun I would say and you're attached to a wire is that right yes exactly yes <laughs> and uh, as a kid maybe it's good to know you need to have a certain height to be able to to go on that activity and also a certain age but um, I think the height is around 140 centimeters around that. And then the age is around 12, 13, 14 years old. Yeah, depending on also how big you are. So if you do the, the first flyer or the glider, where does that take you to? Does it take you to one of the intermediate stops on the way back down? Is that right? Exactly. Yes. So you got two intermediate stops on the way up. And uh, so you end up on the first one. And then from the first one, you basically can continue with the activities. So the acti next activity would be the mountain, yeah, the mountain cart, it's called. So for everyone that knows uh, Mario Kart, kind of like <laughs> Mario Kart, the game where you um, yeah, roll down the mountain in these mountain carts. And that's a lot of fun too. Like also there, I mean, if you're brave, you can go fast, but if you want to have it slow, you can also go slow, of course. And we probably should tell tell people too that you're not just riding down the side of the mountain. It's actually like on a proper <laughs> path that's been made. Yes, <laughs> so exactly. you're not just going over grass and through rocks and things. It's it's actually on a, on a track. Yeah, it's, yeah, thank you. That's important to mention that it's all, you know, well prepared for, for everyone for the mountain carts that you can also break easily enough. And then as a last activity, uh, from the last intermediate stop, you go down by trotty bike. And that is also fun because there, um, as a family, I mean, you can go on the trotty bike alone if you are old enough and if you have the hate, or you can also do it with one of the parents, with mom or dad, and you can be two can stand on the trotty bike. And also there is the pathway. Um, it's really where also, would, I mean, it's not allowed by car to go up there, but cars can drive there as well. So it's really like a street where you drive down to Grindelwald. And this is all the way down from, from the top of the first um, to Grindelwald. And time-wise, I would say it depends also a little bit how long you need to wait, because sometimes on nicer days, there is some waiting time, but we usually take doesn't take long and but in the in the end it's like an afternoon you would spend there yeah or even a day the glider and the the first flyer are they open all year round because i know the carts and the trotty bikes are only operating during the summer months what about the other two exactly yes. so the flyer and the glider you can also do in winter and the good thing to know about them is that they are included in the ski pass so if you ski in Grindelwald on um, you can also ski in Grindelwald fierce you can use these two activities as well uh, free of charge and also good to know is that you don't need to bring extra shoes for the activities I mean if you have your snowboard shoes on or your ski boots you can leave them on the activity. That's no problem at all. So yes, this is uh, definitely good to mention that you can do them in winter as well. 
Yeah, great. Okay, that's good to know. Now, I also believe in Grindelwald there's a giant spider web. In Grindelwald, you can visit the glacier porch. You can learn more about the glacier around Grindelwald and where the water comes from, basically. And in this uh, glacier porch, there is a huge spider web um, between, you know, actually along the way you can walk along uh, the glacier gorge in the middle kind of like is this spider web where uh, you can stand on the on the web itself and yeah it's it's amazing to stand in the gorge like above the river yeah it's, it's adventurous to do so and yeah that this is what we call the spider web in Grindelwald. Mm, something very different. Now, I know on our uh, past family vacations one activity that we quite often enjoyed was mini golf. And uh, it can get pretty serious uh, when you've got the kids who are really keen to to beat mum and dad. Um, Are there mini golf courses in the region? So in Grindelwald, for example, to start with, there's one just in the centre of of the village. And that's open from April to October. So mainly during spring, summer and fall time in Switzerland. And then also in uh, Wengen. Wengen is our uh, second car-free village. I've talked about Mürren before. So Wengen is actually just across the valley on the other side of Mürren. And in Wengen, uh, there is uh, the Lauberhorn Crazy Golf. It's called. It's also a mini golf uh, course where you actually um, golf along the Lauberhorn downhill race. So they kind of like, you know, for every skier or for every interested skier that actually follows the international races, we do have an international race happening in Wengen every year in January, and that's called the Lauberhorn downhill race. And yeah, this mini golf kind of like has different courses or different runs um, where you do different stages of the race, of the downhill race. So if you know the race, uh, it's fun to do because they have like specific um, courses like the, the Kernen S, for example, that's where uh, the skiers kind of like, you know, go around the mountain in a very high speed. And then in the mini golf course, you kind of like can do the same with the golf ball. Okay. <laughs> they just recreated kind of like the race. Yeah, okay. Now, you mentioned earlier about Hazlital and that that's one of the places where the marble runs are very popular. But I believe that that's, um, it's somewhere I haven't actually been. I've been to, to Meiringen, but not to um, the Hasliberg Mountain. What sort of activities are there? Because I know that's sort of, um, you know, known as, as a very family friendly destination. On the Hasliberg as well, I mentioned the trotty bike already that you can do in Grindelwald on the first. So you can do that on the Hasliberg as well, actually. And um, what is different to the trotty bikes on Mount Fierst in Grindelwald is that on the Hasli Bear get the monster trotties. So that means that the tires are thicker and bigger, and that allows you to um, you know drive down on gravel rounds as well, and not only on the pathway basically. So you are a bit freer um, when it comes to the rounds, and it's a lot of fun too because you are also you know it's maybe a bit more stable I would say because you have a thicker tire. You can do that as a kid as well. You can do it uh, actually the same as on Grindelwald Fierst um, together with a parent. You also need to have a certain age and height. This is one of the main uh, attractions as well in Hasliberg in summer. And then as well, I, would, I also want to mention there is tradition, a long-lasting tradition of dwarfs in the Hasliberg. There's various stories about dwarfs that lived there uh, once. And there's also a dwarf trail you can do as a family. And there's this um, dwarf that's called the Mukkerstutz. That's the oldest dwarf in the Haslital. And there's a whole story and way or path um, or a hiking trail, basically, that uh, tells you the story about this dwarf. And along this path, the kids can do interactive uh, stops, like there's a swing or there's um, like, a, I don't know, a, a shield where they tell you more about what the dwarf did at this place, like how he found his way of living basically there in the hospital. And it's really, really um, nicely done for the kids. And that takes you, there's two different trails you can do. So, and each of them takes you roughly one hour to two, maximum two hours, easy hiking trails. So you can also do just, you know, a bit of it and then um, kind of like do a shortcut if you don't want to do the whole thing. But um, yeah, this is some of our family activities that most of the families do as well in the Hasliberg. <laughs> yeah, sounds great. So to to get to Hasliberg, uh, do you take a, a cable car from Meiringen? 
Yes, exactly. So there's uh, two cable cars actually. So from Meiring in the village itself, there's one goes up to the open tower. That's the top. On the top, there's, I mean, in between there are middle stations as well. And you can also switch from one middle station. Um, it's called Reuti. From there, you can hike a little bit for like 30 minutes, easy walking distance. You can go to another cableway station that takes you up to Kesserstadt, which is also a point where you start hiking or skiing in winter. So there's different ways you can go up the Hasselberg. Excellent. Lots of the activities and things that we've talked about are, are outdoor activities. So they're mostly only suitable for if the weather's good. So if it was raining or if it's too cold to be outside, are there any things that kids can do or, you know, families will enjoy indoors? Yes, definitely. I mean, I mentioned the Glacier Gorge before. This is um, an activity that you can also do if it's just not heavy rain, but a little bit of rain. You can easily go to the Glacier Gorge as well, because in the gorge itself, um, you have the trees above you, you have the rock faces above you. So you can easily do that if it's a bit of rain. If it's a bit of a harder rain, you can also do indoor activities. Like in Grindelwald itself, for example, there is an indoor rope park you can visit. So if you have kids that want to learn more about a climbing or, you know, just hanging around the ropes, basically along the mountains that are recreated in this indoor rope park, that is a fun thing to do. And then also in Meiringen, there is also a climbing hall, an indoor climbing hall um, for the kids as well. I mean, if you are professional or advanced, you can, of course, do the heavier um, walls. But also for the kids, there are um, easier ones that they can try to learn how to climb, basically. Then, of course, I mean, you can always visit the villages. I mean, you can do village tours. Parts of them are outside as well. Definitely includes also uh, going inside the shops, like the local craft shops, local cheese shops or pastry shops. And that's always a good thing to do as well if it's not um, such nice weather outside. Definitely. Well, there's certainly plenty of activities uh, for kids there. And I think it, it's good that because there, there's something really for the whole family. Mum and dad obviously might want to go and, and go up to the mountains and, and admire the views. But there's also things that the kids can do there too, playgrounds and the marble runs and all the, the fun activities. So it's definitely a family friendly destination, isn't it? Definitely, yes. And, you know, also, as I said, it's so close to each other. I mean, if you're based in Grindelwald, you can still go on the Hasli Bear. I mean, it looks far away on the map, but it's actually easily reachable. And, um, yeah, as I said, you can stay numerous days and find always a new activity for each day as a family. And that makes it so special. Absolutely. I've been so many times to the Jungfrau region and there's still so many things that I haven't done. So yes, you, you'd never run out of things to do, that's for sure. That's true, yeah. Is there anything else that you'd like to mention that families might be interested to know? We've mostly talked about summer now. Of course, winter, is. we are a huge winter destination as well. And not only skiing, if a family wants or if kids want to start skiing, of course, that's possible. I mean, our region as well, we've got um, ski schools, uh, ski instructors in all of the areas you can ski, basically. And then also, of course, a lot of families, they go sledging up on the mountains. And there's so many different runs you can try out, even at night. And that's something that is... Um, for families also very special, I would say, because I remember when I first went sledging at night, it was so cool. Like it, it would it was from another world. I can imagine it would be magical. Yeah, it's very magical. It's it's different as well, it's just as if you do it during the day. So for example, in Grindelwald, you can do it from Thursdays to Sundays um, during winter time. On the Hasliberg, there's also night skiing you can do. I believe that's every Wednesday um, during winter time, And so there's fun winter activities you can do as well. A true year-round destination for families. Yes, all year round. Wonderful. Well, thank you very much, Isabel, for sharing all that with us. I'll um, put some links in the show notes for all the different places that we've mentioned so people can find more information if, they, if they're interested in, in anything we've chatted about today. Thank you very much as well to you, Carolyn. And uh, for everyone that needs more help, I'm available as well, of course. Absolutely. And I'll put, um, yeah, the, the Jungfrau Region Tourism website link in the show notes as well. Perfect. That sounds lovely. Thanks, Isabel. Thank you, Caroline. I hope you enjoyed hearing all of the wonderful activities that Isabel shared with us. 
there certainly is plenty to do in the Jungfrau region for every member of the family. As Isabel mentioned, the region is very easy to get around thanks to the public transport network. And I also love the fact that you can combine a playground visit with an excursion to one of the big two mountains. The adventure playground at Almondhubel, for instance, can be visited either on the way to or from Schilthorn. And it's also possible, if you start the day early enough, to visit the fantastic Manlikan playground, where you'll find the giant wooden cow, in the afternoon after you've done a morning excursion to Jungfrau Jok. So even if you're only staying in the region for a day or two, there are plenty of things to do to keep the kids happy. And whilst we adults might be content just to sit back and take in the views, well, let's be honest, looking at stunning mountain landscapes probably isn't something that most kids would classify as fun. In the Jungfrau region, you get the best of both worlds. Plenty of excursions and activities to ensure both adults and children have a memorable vacation. If you'd like to know more about any of the places Isabel mentioned, you'll find more info in the show notes, where I'll also add photos of some of the activities we chatted about. You'll find the show notes at holidaystoswitzerland.com forward slash episode 62. There are also lots of guides about accommodation, activities and transport passes for the Jungfrau region on our website too. Thanks very much for joining me today and throughout the year. I really appreciate each and every one of you tuning in each episode. I hope that with the help of my wonderful guests and a few tips from myself too, you are well on the way to planning the perfect Swiss vacation. Hopefully that trip is planned for 2023, which is just around the corner. So before I sign off, I'd like to wish you a very happy, safe and healthy new year. I look forward to bringing you more Swiss travel tips and inspiration in 2023. See you then. Cheers. If you'd like more great resources to help you plan your dream trip to Switzerland, there are lots of ways to connect with us. Visit our website, holidaystoswitzerland.com, sign up for our monthly newsletter, or join our friendly, helpful community of past and future travellers in our Switzerland travel planning group. You'll also find the links to connect with us in the show notes for this episode. Show notes and a list of all previous episodes are available at holidaystoswitzerland.com slash podcast. Don't miss out on your fortnightly dose of Swiss travel inspo. Hit the subscribe button on your favorite podcast app so you never miss an episode. And if you enjoyed the show, please leave a rating. That's all for this edition of the Holidays to Switzerland Travel Podcast. Thanks for joining us and happy travel planning.